Hey everybody out there looking to build your own mobile app without code. Today I'm going to be breaking down Flutterflow. So this is going to be not only a first impression video, but also a review of the platform. Now if you're a member of my channel or if you subscribe to the channel, you'll know that I review tons of different codeless application development platforms. You can check out my channel for those. Not only do I review several for free, but I also show the paid platforms as well. So today's video is basically covering Flutterflow.io. You'll see the URL in the top right. Now if you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe and tune into the channel for regular videos. All right, so jumping straight in, you'll see we have the website pulled up here. I have my new account set up in this tab, but I want to go over the features and pricing first. So when you go to the website, you'll see that you have a pretty standard looking application building interface. This looks really similar to a lot of the other ones out there, but it does look like it's very customizable. So you have your components on the left hand side, you'll drag and drop, and then you have some additional options over here. Now I love the way the website's set up. You'll see it has a really cool scrolling setup. So you'll See, we have this demo option here to get a demo. So you can view on Flutterflow if you want to see specific applications. So you'll see right here, we can click view a demo and of this CRM application. So I clicked that and you'll see they're going to ask a couple of basic questions here. Um, so we'll just click to We'll just click the basics and click done. And then it's going to land us in this demo of this project. So this is really cool. You don't even need to sign up or create an account and you can immediately view an application that was already built in this platform. And you have the ability to drag and drop and add options here so that you can basically start editing right away. So it gives you the ability to test it without having to go purchase a trial or anything like that. So that's a really cool feature. Now we're going to continue scrolling through. You'll see some testimonials. You'll see some details on the API integrations, multi-language apps, etc., which is really cool. You'll see some customization options. So we see this flow. You'll see different functions and widgets. So we'll kind of scroll past all of this. Now, another cool thing is you get to export the code and deploy to the app stores. So they are pretty transparent about how this works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to review the pricing page and then we're just going to jump straight into the builder. <clears throat> so you'll see that monthly and annual, just like with most other platforms, when you go annual, you can save a little bit of money. But we will just compare the plans really quickly. I love that they have a free plan that starts you out. So it's a really, really simple way to go ahead and get started with the platform, kind of play around with some things and just kind of see what it looks like. This does restrict you from downloading code and the APKs, but that's fine. So you can just kind of test it out and see, you know, what exactly it looks like. Now, when you get into the paid plans, that's where you start to get some of the functionality most people want. So specifically the code download and the APK download. Now, for those of you that are looking to deploy to the Apple App Store and things like that, you're probably going to want this pro plan here, which has the code download, GitHub integration, and then your one-click app translation and specifically this app and play store deployment. Then there is the teams option and looks very similar in cost. Well, same price, but you get a ton of additional options here, including that shared design library. So those pricing plans are actually pretty much in line with some of the others out there, the $30 a month uh, for kind of like the basic download and upload type of functionality is pretty similar to some of the others I've reviewed. Um, it's a little bit cheaper than some of the other platforms out there. So it falls in the lower to middle end of that spectrum. So now we're going to jump into the platform itself. So I literally just clicked login, create account, and I signed up with an email and a password. I was not required to fill out any kind of credit card information. And this is the first page I see. So you'll see that we have this little tutorial. You can click through and see how this platform functions, including themes and things of that nature. All right, so at this point, we've kind of walked through that. So we're just going to click Start Tutorial and just kind of see what this tutorial looks like. So you'll see that you'll click Next and basically review the different things that you can do. And it has eight preset things to run through. So setting properties for data and all of that. So we're just going to click Done and just kind of play around with it a bit.
So first thing that I really like is that the UI is actually built in kind of like a phone interface instead of some of the others that are just a boring rectangle. So that is really cool. So we'll switch to dark mode. So you'll see we have an easy switch up here. You'll see we have the hide device option. So you get that what I would call boring rectangle. And then you have the option to display resize handlebars. Um, so not much of a change there. And then we have the display keyboard. So you can see what it would look like on a phone that's actually using the keyboard. So I really, really like that they've set things up like that. And it's really easy to set the zoom and things like that. So we'll hide the keyboard. Now you do have the option to adjust the canvas size as well, but for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna leave it. So we're gonna start from the top left and kind of work our way across the screen. So you'll see up top, you have the ability to choose from different device types. So if you wanted to switch this to see it from a MacBook Pro, you can now see it from that MacBook Pro styling, or you could choose an iPad or something like that. So for the purpose of this video, we are just going to choose a somewhat generic phone or device and we'll increase the zoom just a tad. Now you'll see over here we have widgets and components and then we have templates. So if you wanted to use these templates here, you can scroll through and see some of the options. So we'll just drag something over and see what happens. So you'll see we were able to drag over that sample container. So it looks like these are basically just your pre-built components. So it does tell you when you need to replace options. So it does look like it's setting up almost like a column. So we'll click add row and I'll show you what I mean by that. So it sets things up kind of side by side. So if we wanted to set a component or something next to or inside of, um, it looks like it's kind of snapping to specific places. Nothing wrong with that. So now what we'll do is we're just going to select this and we will click delete on the keyboard. Unfortunately, it does not let you do that. So we're going to look over on the right hand side at the settings for this little feature here. So you do have the option to preview and we have a couple of options for running the application. But unfortunately, it doesn't look like they've kind of built in a ton of functionality to work with your keyboard, as in some other editing or some other builders, the delete button will just actually delete those components. So you actually have to go through a little bit of effort to make changes to those components. So it's not as user friendly in that regard, but that's not terrible overall compared to some of the other things that you would need to do. So what we're gonna do is continue to scroll through some of these other options here. So we're gonna to go to the top left and we're going to stick with most frequently used elements just to keep this part simple. So we are going to drag over just a standard button and we're gonna put it on top of this and then just click replace and just kind of show what it looks like and where it is. So when I say that things kind of snap in place, what I mean is you can tell when I click to drag, I can't just move the button up. It is actually placing it based on other elements that seem to take up the majority of the place. So for example, if I try to move the button just to the left, you'll see it kind of snaps in place here. Now you do have the ability to select these different like rows and columns and things of that nature. So if you want, you have the ability to select those and you can make changes here. So you'll see we have the option for animations and all of the settings on the right hand side. This is pretty standard for most application builders that I've seen out there. So basically when you click a component, the settings are available on the right hand side. So we have quite a few options here. So you have the properties, actions, backend query, and animations. And then up here you have the ability to add documentation, which is really cool. Convert to a reusable component, which is gonna be very useful and then save this for other projects. So, so far, everything's relatively simple. It, it's not as easy to find some of the options that other builders make easy or make easier. So for example, when you're clicking around, it's very difficult to figure out how you actually just do simple things like, for example, 
delete something that you've been working with. So when you drag the items around, there's no floating trash can. You don't have really anything. You don't have the ability to um, drop it off on like an X or something like that. So you do have to right click and you'll see we have a couple of options here. So for example, if we wanted to cut it, it will just put it in your clipboard, which is nice, but a little bit of a pain. So you'll see when we're clicking on things over here, there is a delete this page, which if we need to, we can do that. But we're going to avoid that and kind of stop playing around with this as much. So we're going to make something very simple. We'll drag over an image. We will click replace. So we have an image right here. And then we'll try to drag over another image and put add row. So you'll see it's adding it in a row. Now, if we wanted to drag an image over here, you'll see we can also add a column and you'll see how it's essentially kind of displaying these things. So you'll have the ability to add kind of horizontally or vertically. And then I love that you have this stack option here. So you can work with and kind of format things so it's not just stuck on a grid. You do have the ability to drag over things like forms, and then you can edit those forms on the right-hand side. So there are quite a few options. And I love that we have the option for things like flippable cards and then different staggered views. So we have tons of options here. And now that we've kind of gone through some of the widgets at a high level, we're going to go through some of the more interesting concepts with this app builder. So now when we move down here, we have a widget tree. Now this is similar, I do a lot of reviews on AppGyver. Typically this tree is over here on the right side in AppGyver, but you do have the ability to edit and work with all of the different components in a more user-friendly manner. So I don't really like how this snap works with this platform. I would love it if I could just put the element wherever I want it to be, but it looks like there's a little bit of uh, logic you have to work with, which is kind of annoying personally. So the idea there is if you want to work with things, resize, change settings, or kind of reorder, you can do all of that here just by grabbing components and moving them. So if I want to move this component, you'll see I select it here. And if I want to move it down here, I can just do that. And then the component's been moved. You do also have the option to click the components and still view their settings over here. So all in all, it's a relatively easy platform to use. And you'll see you have your options up here so you can uh, prevent scrolling and do some additional options, but it's a very responsive builder. Now going down, we have also have a page selector. So you'll see we just have the home page right now. You can duplicate, copy, or delete. So if we duplicate the page, you'll see we can select this page. We have these different components. So we can do things like, for example, if we wanted to, we'll just cut all of that. And now we go back to the page, that's the true home page, and you can see that those pages are different. Now you have the option to connect databases here. So you'll see they have this option for Firebase, but we have some different data types and options for the settings. So they have some pretty technical options here, which is great. Now we also have a local state. So you'll see you can define your variables to store across different pages. We now have the API call option where we can define API calls and they have the documentation set up here. You'll see we have the project media and assets to upload our content. And then we have custom code here if you're interested and then your general settings. So you have a ton of settings. You can see as I'm scrolling down, these are just the settings for the theme. You have settings for your navigation bar, for your app details, permissions, platforms. There is a ton of content here, especially for mobile deployments and all of these other options like Stripe integration for those of you that are looking to add payments. So there's just so much that you can do with this platform. So now we're going to go back just to the regular builder and kind of highlight the remaining pieces. So your settings on the right hand side are going to change based on the components that you're clicking. But over at the top, you'll see that we have project versions and snapshots. You'll see that we have the, uh, the setting here that'll show you 
warnings for Firestore or whatever's going on with the application. We have comments that you can view. You have the ability to go into developer mode to view the code, which is really cool to see. You'll see it's just set up right here. And you can see the home page copy and we'll see the code here. I love that you have the ability to do that. You also have the ability, so we're gonna hover over to share the project, to preview the app. So we'll click this and see what happens. We get a new page set up that basically just shows us the application and there's not really much to click around, so you'll see that we have this card that moves. Um, so you just have the ability to, you know, check the different device types, share it if you want to. So that's a really cool option as well. And then you have the option to run and do everything else here. So when you go to your home page, you'll see we have the project that we've been working on, and then you can set up other projects if you need to and work with basically different themes or things that people have already set up or build your own and start from scratch. So I know it was a really quick high level overview. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.